I'm going to discuss a little about impingement or entrapment of the femoral nerve. And then after I go over a little bit of the anatomy and some of the clinical aspects of it, we're going to talk about some exercises that we can do to actually free that up. When I talk about exercises, we're talking about either getting the nerve, tensioning it from both ends, or getting the nerve to glide or translate through the tissue. Okay, if we start looking at the femoral nerve, essentially it comes off the lumbar spine, right at the base here, and in the lower lumbar spine, L2, L3, and L4 goes down, basically goes underneath the inguinal area, which is right, we've got a ligament that comes across here, dives underneath it, and then it divides into two sections. Really interesting nerve in that we have a posterior and an anterior division of this nerve. The posterior division basically gets all of the sensation and the motor and gets the information from your brain down into your quadriceps here. Now, why this is important is I talk about these deep muscles here, the iliacs and psoas. These are your primary hip flexors. Hip flexion. This is hip flexion, going up in position here. If you cannot perform this action very well, you may have some problems with, the, with basically femoral nerve entrapment. Your secondary hip flexors are your quadriceps here. So anywhere along this area, if you're having a problem bringing the knee up, you may have a bit of entrapment of that nerve. So if we look at this and we say, okay, the nerve here is very deep. Why would this get entrapped? Anatomically, it's really interesting because the femoral nerve goes right through the middle of this psoas muscle, your primary hip flexor. And sometimes we've been sitting in a desk for a long time, we're on a bike, we're doing certain actions, and that contraction can cause compression on the nerve. So we'll get altered sensation. Really important too, because this is a common aspect of the overall picture of low back pain. When people have low back pain, things tightened up a lot. We actually put a lot of tension on our hip flexors. They have to work a lot more. So we start getting a little bit of compression on the nerve. Really important in that area. So we're going to go over some exercises now, and we're going to look at what we can do to actually release that nerve or stop the tethering of the nerve. Hi, Dr. Evangelos Milanas here at Kinetic Health. This next exercise that we're going to do is to, to mobilize, to help glide, and also to tension the femoral nerve. So we've got Sam here lying uh, face down. Uh, actually, you can drop down a little bit lower. So your starting position, you want to start out flat. And basically what you're going to do is a half push-up. So you want to come up slowly, first onto the elbows, and then a little bit further if you can, making sure that the pelvis of the hips remain flat up against the, the table. Now, in this position here, we're stretching out the femoral nerve, creating some tension. In order to get it to move or to actually increase tension, we're going to start to incorporate some leg and head movements. So we're going to have Sam bring the chin down and bringing the head back. So that's one component. You could also incorporate the legs. So if we were treating this left side, or if Sam was doing this exercise at home to treat herself, she would want to move the head and then also bring the leg up. And so you can play around with these motions, either by bringing the leg up, head back at the same time, or flexing the head and moving the uh, leg. Basically, you want to see how it feels, creating tension, getting a sense of motion, of glide between the nerve and all the underlying musculature here. Great exercise to, to treat yourself at home. Good, perfect. The next exercise we're going to show you is actually what we actually get patients to do quite often when they have low back pain. When you have low back pain, the muscles here really tighten up, and the oppositional muscles to that will actually work a lot harder. So the erector spinae back here, their opposition is the hip flexors, iliopsoas here. So normally what we'd get the patient to do is actually just get in this position, one leg forward, pushing their hip forward slightly, and then taking their arm over to the side like this. A professor at Waterloo, Dr. Stuart McGill, actually showed me this in one of the courses, to basically reach over like this, it's a lot more effective for actually opening up the hip flexors and when you're doing a sustained static stretch, it's really good for stretching out the hip like this. Now we're talking about nerve flossing and the femoral nerve. Well, what we're going to do in this case is we're actually going to introduce a dynamic component of this. So what we do is we have Sam go from back from this position here and kind of work over there and go forward like this. At the same time, we'll introduce a component of both head motion into flexion and extension. Taking it, let's say, five times forward into flexion. And then after we finish that, we go probably oh, five times back into extension. This is a great way of opening up the hip, flossing the nerve in a dynamic motion. We want to make sure that we get glide of the tissue. This is not a static motion, as I showed the stretch with you. We want to make sure we go back and forth like this through different positions. Again, very, very effective exercise for any type of femoral nerve entrapment.